<laughs> Even though just had a bit of an accident in the workshop, I just dropped it. It's fine though, hence the giggles from the boys. Um, so my voice is this evening, JP and Wayne. Um, so hey guys. guys, hi um, guys, and in the chat, I think we have David, um, Jay. Richard, Steve, bah, 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 Jeff, and Wayne. Obviously, Wayne's here. Um, oh, and Mr. Ruben and Leona. Um, hi, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, hello, hello. Guys, I'm going to flick you off the screen now, if that's all right, and then um, get cracking. And hi, Christine and Michael. Just seen you jump in. Um I'll um, flick it over and get started. Um, no problem. Okay. All right. This name, I'll still be here. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, right. Oh, my ugly bug. Um, right, I'll show you what I'm doing tonight before I get started. That's a good place. Um, before he throws it on the floor again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to make a start on the ship tonight. Um, I was umming and ah in beforehand, but I'm going to go with the ship now. So, um, yeah, we're going to get started on that tonight. I'll flick the camera around, stick my mask on, um, put myself on mute, and I'll let the boys crack on, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Point picked. Right. Let me cam over. Is it that one? Yes. Now, this is a sturdy piece of plastic. Having dropped it, and there's not even a chip in it, so that's pretty handy. Um, right, onto the mute, and I'll get cracking. Okie dokie. Rightio. Is it just me or the, uh, the, the chats on StreamYard seem to come in a hell of a lot slower than they do over on YouTube? Yes, it, it's, it's bloody annoying, that is. Yeah. Uh, hello, Stace. Um... David McClurman's already put it out there. Um, I don't know if you saw JP, but he, he dislocated a couple of fingers while standing on the lathe the other day. Yeah, I think uh, I think it might have been David that commented on my video and said he had a bit of an accident. And it looks like he popped them back in himself. Oh, my Lord. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So I finished that um I finished that live edge bowl today. Got it got it down to about ten mil wall thickness. Oh, so the that, one that jumped off. Yeah, the one that jumped off of me. It didn't it didn't jump off her a second time. So I was quite happy about that. But uh, I made sure it, it it did warp a little bit. There was one very tiny crack in there, um, which I put uh, black CA into it. So yeah, apart from that, uh, I, I I used uh, to use the um, uh, the old uh, heat gun trick. It lost a hell of a lot of water. Uh, so oh, when yeah. right when I first um, when I first turned it and hollowed it out, it weighed uh, five pounds something. Um, and after turning, uh, after I put it, added it in its shavings for a couple of weeks and done all the rotating and things like that, it, it had lost uh, just under two pound of water, uh, two pound of water, something like, or two. Yeah, so uh, quite a lot. A lot of people, a lot of people, honestly, 
what some people do is actually once the uh, rough turn, they'll uh, boil it. All right. Yeah, uh, because the the sap is different to water, if you like. So when you boil it, you yeah, take it's... all the you take all the sap out of the wood and just put water into it, which is easier to deal with. That makes sense. Yeah, because obviously when the when the sap heats up, it becomes thinner, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. It's like uh, I don't know. If, um, it's probably not not a proper osmosis type thing, but rather than having the sap, the the boiling water boils all the sap out of the wood, so you just left with the water in there, which is easier to deal with. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I didn't think of that. I've got to say it's something I haven't done. <laughs> But I have heard it done. There used to be yeah. a, a product. There used to be a product on the market, and this is for everybody out there who is a wood turner. There used there used to be a product on the market called EPG. Um, oh, and I can't remember the proper name. It, it, it ends in glycol. But really, if you if you soak a wet piece of wood or a rough turned piece of wood in EPG. Uh, that does work through osmosis where it, it puts out all the sap and the EPG goes into the wood and it means that the wood actually dries a hell of a lot faster but it doesn't take a very good finish once once, it, once it's done I mean uh, and I'm, I'm going back to the late 80s 90s here uh, when when this stuff was about I can't remember the proper name for it. Uh, maybe somebody out there who was done turning for a while will know. It's not like I'm. I'm just on Google. It's not like a like polyethylene glycol, is it, or something like that? Uh, it could well be. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Rumors put in about drying in the microwave. Yeah, that works very well as well, Mr. Rubin. Um, as long as you get the the doing the, the cycles in the microwave properly. Um, yeah, I, what you I done, I done that once and it just went completely wrong. But I did it. It was completely my fault. I put a piece of cherry in the wood. I want to say, but instead of doing it for like. A little short time at once. I just, I just left it in there, and the the wood just went bang inside the, inside the microwave. Yeah. So that was fun. All the, all the sub, all the sub boiled. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really, for for microwave and rough turned bowls, what you've got to do is weigh the bowl first. Yeah. Before you start microwaving it, and yeah. then put it on sort of half. Um, I was going to say speed there, not half speed, half heat for around about 30 seconds at a time. Yeah. But you don't do 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds all the time. It's got to stop uh, for a while and, and let it sit and then go back and do it again over a period of days, if you like. Gotcha. Leona's uh, just put in about yeah, having a bowl uh, in the freezer at the moment. Yeah, I just saw that. That's, that's a new one. I've never, I don't think I've ever heard anyone do that before. Um, I've never heard of anybody do that before, other than turning an old freezer into a kiln, uh, where basically it's an old freezer um, that people have taken to the tip, to the dump, or whatever. Uh, you get that, and you you stick a hole in the side for air to get in, and you stick a 60-watt light bulb in. And people have used uh, freezers for kilns for, for quite a while now. Very popular yeah. in America, I've got to say. Yeah. Oh, she's experimenting. Yeah, some because you could put like, um, like a 100-watt light bulb in there on, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because my uh, my ex, one of my ex brother in laws, he he basically made a uh, 
and, and I've got an old freezer, put a, a couple of massive light bulbs in there, and he was making his own biltong. All right. So, yeah, he got a load of shredded beef and seasoned it and basically hung it on a load of racks and made his own biltong. Oh, very good. Oh, that, that's worth thinking of. So. Hey, Tracy's in the house. Uh, another thing that now, um, Ruben's just mentioned Carl there. Yeah, Carl so. Used, what, 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 Carl used rice. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what Cole's done, yeah. So what else uh, Ruben uh, mentioned is Cole's got uh, massive drums of water outside um, in his backyard. And um, what he basically does is every time he gets some brand new logs in, um, and obviously he doesn't want to just store them all in his house and just let them dry out, he, he keeps them in a vat uh, or the big drums of water with soapy water in it. And just leaves them right. so, so they stay wet. You know, like the old before the old log mills, they they leave them in a massive lake. Yeah, the, the basically yeah. the full no, tree. I, know that, that, I, I took a, a big um, a big beach blank for uh, Steve down to make the central last year, and as far as I'm aware, yeah. he has still got that sitting in a tub of water somewhere. Until he gets around the uh, stickers on the lid, that's the best thing to do, really, isn't it? Because it's it's just going to crack, and you, you're going to have a quarter of a blank left otherwise, isn't you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, no, no trophy. Trophy. It's, uh, it's ivory supplement. Is that what you want to call it? Substitute. Substitute, Ivory not substitute. Not it, it, it's basically polyester. Is it polyester? Uh, yes. And yeah. he's giving us a thumbs up, so yes. Yep, yeah, Steve just Sorry. said that that ball blank is still sitting in the bucket, bubbling away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Andy's doing the, the, the Viking ship at the moment. Well, I hope he does this one to the right side so it fits outside the door. Yeah. Well, he's got bigger. He's got bigger doors this time, isn't he? The last thing he wants yeah, to do is have to chop, chop the blank in half and then super glue it back together. <laughs> so Steve's just said he has to skim scummy bubbles off it every now and then. Oh, I yeah, would I'll think bet. that's the that's the sap coming out. The water is replacing the sap, and I would think the scummy bubbles are the sap that's coming out of the wood. But if you listen to me talk, you think I know what I'm talking about. I know, right? I actually mentioned you on the, the video today that I recorded. So, because I, I, I genuinely thought that that, um, what do you call it? Uh, the, the heat gun trick. I genuinely thought that you gave that, to, you gave that idea to me. But when you turned around and said that you didn't, you didn't know anything about it, I was like, well, you really all gave it. Surely it couldn't have been me that come up with that idea. I ain't that intelligent. No, I'd, I'd never heard of that one before, Jamie, tell you the truth. Yeah, so it's kind of like, I want to give credit where credit is due. Cause I generally don't know where it came from. I, I don't think I came up with it. I don't, I don't want to claim that I did. You know, unless I did. Do you know what I mean? But, no, um, exactly what you mean. So, yeah. And to tell you the truth, it's great. I, I, I've seen a, a couple of um, couple of things today. I was watching. 
and people had been talking about about that type of thing and uh, yeah why not spin it yeah. get the water out of the edge dry it off with a heat gun sand it oh that was yeah. somebody was talking about sanding wet wood um oh that was would come up with sandpaper wouldn't it yeah it was it was well you can wet sand you can just wet sand with water um i wouldn't recommend wet sand with oil because oil and water don't mix if the if the wood's wet but people yeah. were saying wet wet sand with water and if you wet sand with water the the sandpaper doesn't get gummed up as much uh but other people were saying in the same stream you know about drying the outside and then sanding it and drying the outside and then sanding it and i thought well why not mm. Yeah, I remember telling um, Carl when he was doing his live streams about the uh, the hot gun trick, and the Wally decided to come out of a blowtorch. And yeah, that didn't go as well as what I uh, as well as well as I was expected. No, uh, I, I he, 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 he almost caught fire to his bowl. <laughs> so. You're talking about blowtorches now. You you've got to talk about uh, Steve Trudell. Because that man yeah, he's, he's a a fan of fire, fire. isn't he? Oh, yeah. aye. Until he runs out of gas. Like yeah. he did last night. Oh, shouldn't have mentioned that. That's not good. Uh, we've got, got to live with fire. Can't not. <laughs> no, we've got Mike the Midnight Joker in. Oi, oi, Mike. So I see you had a, uh, a visit from Dale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he sorted the computer out. Nice. Which which um, was totally my fault. Well, it wasn't totally my fault. But, <laughs> you didn't turn it on again, uh, did you? Oh, no. Um, I had a very old monitor, um, which for some reason uh, wasn't receiving a signal from the computer. Yeah, so yeah. I replaced I bought Jane a new monitor for her computer, and I got her old one, which still yeah. wasn't receiving a signal from the, the computer. And then Dale came up and said, nah, you've got it on the wrong thing. I had it for, um, it was going into the HDMI port, and oh, I was still trying to get sure. it on the, on the PC port. But anyway, that was my bad. So we oh, set it up, sure. he, he's set up OBS for us to um, link in with the, the different cameras and how I can do... Um, Oh, the different things with the cameras, you know, zoom in and zoom out and, and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, exactly, Steve. Computer said no. <laughs> um, until Dale arrived, then computer said yes. Yeah. And computer, computer ain't got a bloody choice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to have a play about, uh, have a mess about, turn something, maybe record it. And if it goes well, I'll I'll stick the recording out. If not, I'll uh, I'll use it on Wednesday for the live. Yeah, you're like a real YouTuber now, Wayne. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> spread spread it about, spread it about. Maybe I'll get some more subs. <laughs> I try. I've, um, just in case anybody um, will be. In case anybody will be tuning in on Wednesday, I've got to say, Leona says on a, we on a Wednesday a night. Um, yeah, I saw that. I'll, I'll come back to that one. Um, <laughs> on a Wednesday night on on me lives, I am so surprised at how many people tune in. I mean, um, I'm getting what I'm, I'm averaging 
well, they're around about 70 at the moment uh, in the live stream, which is absolutely brilliant. And thank you, everybody who comes across. Uh, but on uh, Wednesday, you're, you're I'm going to be... what you do, mate. Everyone loves what you do. That's what a simple as. Oh, cheers, JP. I'm going to be on the VB on Wednesday night. Oh. And I may well put another crotch on. Oh. <laughs> And just for the little you computer. Computer, 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 computer. Computer. Yeah. Talking about the VV, me and uh, me and Dale were talking about going up to see uh, Glyn at some point. Oh, let me know when. Yeah, we'll have to. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm popping down to see Glenn at the end of this month, and I don't All think right. it's going to have I don't think it's going to have anything to do with Woodturn. I think we're going to be playing on the the metal lathe, but I'm popping down at the end of this month. Uh, yeah. I haven't been down for a while, so. Well, uh, my other half's got to go to her family's at uh, the end of this month, so I'm basically I think I was going to go up and see Dale anyway. So, I don't know, maybe we can see if we can sort of sank out then. Oh, that'd be grand. Because I think you was going to come it's... down to my workshop anyway, wouldn't you? I and am, the... but that's not going to be till June. Oh, right, that, yeah. That'll, demo, that'll, that'll, be the end, yeah, that'll be the end of June when I'm down doing the the demo uh, down in Surrey. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, we could try and have a word with that. And if he obviously, if he's got to see if he's not busy and all that sort of stuff. Speaking of the devil, is that in the chat? Is he in the chat? Yeah. I haven't seen him. Glenn mate. No, no, no. Uh, Dale. Oh. Oh, D D is Dale? Oh, he is. He can't be home now, can he? You never know with Dale. He, he's always got his phone or his laptop with him and. He's, yeah, probably, really. he's probably talking to his car and his car's online for him. Well, he, he was driving the last time I sent Sinead a message. Yeah. Uh, he says him and his... Um, oh, he's just, he's just, just gone for a corner. week. He's ah, just gone right. for a week. He's at the M6 toll. So you have to pay to go for a week then. Every time I get into Dale's car, there's something else, like, there's some other new fact about it. <laughs> you know? I'm wait, I, wonder, I wonder I'm waiting for Dale to turn up wearing a black leather jacket. Do you know what I mean? Like, and the car's just going to have a red light that flashes across the front. <laughs> and starts jumping over the fence. Yeah, turbo <laughs> boost. <laughs> I've never been in the car. He usually just get, drives up the way, parks it in the driveway and comes in the house. Kirkwood 6000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, They've got wireless anyway, and well, charging it, as I can believe it. All this chat going on, I, I can't see where Andy's up to on the on the boat. Oh, yeah, sorry, ship. Uh, he's uh, the round bits that go down the side. Uh, he's oh that, yeah, hollowing it out. Now he's just shaking it, shaking it off now. Don't shake too much. Well, Tracy said the ship looks, uh, it's turned out really cool. I've not and turned. Leona said it's going to look awesome. I've not turned that 
uh, that yet, but I, I presume all of the, the GPS acrylic would turn about the same. So I turned that the purple stuff on that um, Egoscope, Kaleidoscope thing the other day, and it turns absolutely incredible. Yeah, it looked really nice, to tell you the truth, the, yeah. the end product. Yeah, it polishes up beautifully as well. Look. Oh, Rich, just to let everybody know, Rich is not doing a, a live tomorrow night. He's, um, I think the, the family has come down with a, a really nasty bug. Um, so he's not doing a live tomorrow night. Uh, so I'll see how I feel and seeing as how um, Rich isn't going to be doing a live. Um, I may well jump in. Um, just so there's... Uh, there's something happening on a Tuesday night. Means you might get me two nights in a row, but um, if you can live with that, I can live with that. I want to say, oh, no, but I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dale says he's back on the road. All right, mate, take it easy. And hello, Mrs. Kirkwood. No problems, Rich. Uh, Leona says, uh, are you not on Thursday too, Wayne, with Steve? Um... I don't know, because last Thursday was was last Thursday. I can't yeah, last Thursday was. I may well be on on Thursday was Dave. Oh my life, busy week. Do you know what I need to. I know this is a, a sore subject for Andy since he's a team girly Viking. Um. But uh, I've, I need to jump back on the scroll saw again. I haven't been on the scroll saw for months. Oh, well, Andy's been practicing. I know. Don't tell me, I'm still, I'm still going to whoop him. You see his fingers tapping. You see his fingers tapping. That's what I like to hear. People who uh, aren't very certain about things. I, I even gave him a chance by buying him some decent blades. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, cheers, Jeff. It's all practice. Uh, Tracy, my ankle, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a sore subject at the moment. Um, they, they kind of messed up, so I need to go back to the hospital and kind of have a go at them. They messed up the surgery. Again. Yeah, it took them five years to do it originally, and when they got around to it, they messed it they up. messed it up, yeah. But oh. the problem is I don't know if they did mess it up. To me, it looks like they messed it up. But what I think's happened is, is where I've spent 30 <laughs> years... Um, looking at my ankle being wonky, and now I'm looking at it, and they've actually straightened it. Um, it now my, it head, just you? My, my yeah, my head's telling me that there's something not right. Yeah, you know where reality is. My ankle is straight, but yet my ankle is still very much very painful, and yet the right. surgeon, the surgeon did tell me that um, if in a few years' time, your ankle's still hurting. The the bolt may have to come out. Oh, so maybe that's just the case. If it's um the, the it, it's gotten to that point where the bolt has to come out because it's still causing me grief. It, um, he, he did say that was there is a chance that could happen. So, yeah. Oh, well. All right. Um, just to answer um, Steve here. Uh, Steve, no, no problems, mate. I, um, I'll be in there on Thursday night. 
Um, uh, Glenn's here now. Hello, Glenn. Yeah, Glenn's in. Evening, Glenn. Tim Yorkshire-Grit. Glenn, um, I'm coming down the end of Feb. Um, JP was talking about having a, a meet-up at York, York Place as well. Uh, not sure when, but we will be in touch. Yeah, so you're going to have to suffer. So Richard said, if the be- if the bolt comes out, will your head fall off, JP? If what, sorry? If the bolt comes out of the angle, will your head fall off? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's holding me together these days. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a, a three-inch screw going into my ankle from my heel of my foot. That's how they went oh, in. Oh, they screwed, they, yeah, it's quite painful. Yeah, I don't need to hear that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, that just, it, it, even picturing that in my mind, it feels so. Um... Glynn's asking, is Dale coming as well? We're not sure at the moment, Glynn. Um, Dale is actually travelling, so we haven't been able to get it. Uh, we're not in touch with him at the moment. I just sent you a picture of that bowl, Wayne. Oh, that's looking really smart, Jamie. So I've got another three chunks of wood that's basically like that. So I'm thinking about doing a set of three, but stained all different colours. Very nice. Oh, and Richard said, sorry, thought they were in his neck. That's your bullet <laughs> again, again uh, JP. No, that, that's, I think that's Frankenstein you're thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Frankenstein couldn't have kids because his nuts were in his neck. <laughs> David Birch is in the house. Hello, David. I got to have hot dogs with David in Texas. Hello, a nice guy. Good. I like all these people who are nice. Apart from me, I'm just an asswipe. <laughs> oh, Clive's in as well. Sorry, uh, Snake. Missed uh, you there. I... He's still... S- Snake's eating. Uh, had a lump of metal in my left arm that broke uh, broke off a cold chisel when I was an apprentice after I wet my arm with it on a TV. Ouch. Uh, I've learned not to argue with you, Wayne. <laughs> Glenn, anybody can argue with me. I just take absolutely no, nearly swore there, notice whatsoever. At my age, I can't see the point. Mind you, I'll join in with an argument just to upset people. Because <laughs> that's that's pretty good fun. I'm waiting to see if I can see some pictures in the in the uh, the polyester dust as well, again, like I did last time. All right, hi. Oh, uh, Ruben's just put in there. Um, about opening a, a tub of Yorkshire grit on his premiere uh, tonight. If you missed the premiere, um, go helps. over and watch the video. That was Ruben turning one of his penguins. Uh, and it's really, really neat. Nice.
And like you see, Steve, the chisel had a mushroom on the top. You should never hammer chisels with mushrooms on the top, Steve. You should know that. You should always grind them away so you got a decent surface to hammer on. So, Green, how's the metal work going? He sent me a picture today of uh, part of his metal workshop, so I'd say it's coming along very nicely. Yeah, I mean he's got the um, he's got the new lathe in there as well, the new metal working lathe, uh, which I'm hopefully going to have a play with at the at the end of the month. Um, that he is to wood turn mind you seeing that i can't see a trader because he's he's actually turning me a, a a new piece for my vacuum chuck mm. you don't need a metal lathe anyway just put loads of yorkshire grit on and just stand there for ages <laughs> <laughs> and ages, and ages. <laughs> yeah, you'll get down to it eventually. Glint's in, he hasn't got enough years left. You've got more than I have, Glint. I take it what Andy's doing now is all the shields on the, the side of the boat. Ship. Sorry. Yeah. That basically looks like a, a, a almost a spitting image of the Viking ship we got down near me. All right. Oh, and that's the seal. I'm, I'm starting to see it now. The, I can see the seal there. Yeah. So the one that one we got down near me is like a, it's like a Viking longboat, and it's it's got all the shields down the side, and it's got like um, uh, a, a, I think it's got a gold dragon on uh, a gold dragon head either. But I can't remember if it's on one of the at one of the ends or on both ends. I can't exactly remember. I know it's definitely on one of them, but it's got different color. Um, the uh, shields going down it, right? Let's see if I can find a picture of it. Uh, yeah, because down uh, the the town that I live in is uh, Broadstairs, and that the yeah. beach that that beach is called Viking Bay, and apparently that's where the Vikings landed. All right. I don't know, tell a lie, there's, uh, it's got a dragon head front and back, and it's, uh, this one's, it's called the, this one was called the Hugin, or Huggin, whatever you want to call it. Uh, where 
Ouais, Just having a look. Oh, well, that looks really neat. I think that might be a tail on the back end. Oh, it is a tail, yeah. 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 But if all all round where I live, there's there's um, Viking ships themes everywhere. Right. Like, I mean, the, the Vikings came built, across. It, go on, GB. It, it's basically built into like um, roundabouts and things like that. So, ev like everywhere you go, like we've got a massive shopping centre called Westwood Cross, and um, they, they've got a uh, they've got like a, a massive sundial in the floor, and part of like the seating area is a, a giant Viking ship. Oh, yeah, right. and and then on one on one of the roundabouts is a giant Viking ship. Like it, it's not a, a Viking ship as such; it's more of an art piece. Um, but right in the centre of it is a, a giant wooden Viking ship made out of what looks like just massive wooden beams. But it, by, right. you can tell it, you can tell it looks like a dragon, uh, a Viking ship. But it's uh, it obviously isn't a Viking ship. But it's basically just a load of planks of wood sticking out of the ground yeah so yeah it's it seems like there's something that's very proud of oh gps agencies is in the house well the, hey. the vikings the, the vikings landed in the northeast as well but once they got the newcastle and saw all the fucking losses there they fucked up again oh i swore <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> That's how we managed to keep the Scots out of England. Well, oh, yeah, definitely. Most of them. Yeah. Once they got to Newcastle and saw all the losses in wearing out down the big market, this is all yeah. shade. I can't be dealing with this. So they all buggered off again. Yeah. All the others are like adrenaline junkies. <laughs> Hello, Matt and or Alison. Oh, Sneaks commented. Must have finished his tea. How was he? Matt's playing the Witcher. How many different kinds of Dremel bits have you uh, do you use, have you used so far, Andy? Three. Okay. So that's, that's not that's not too bad, really. I think that's probably three for the eight GP. No, I don't mean I'm like sure. one. I don't mean like um, if the fact that they've they've ended up wearing away. I mean, how many different styles in general? No, the, the, that, that's what I mean. I think it's probably just three for the eight. I think I'm sure he's used oh, right. more. Yeah, you know, previously. Ah, oh, gotcha. Oh, so you, you go, you've been for all of them. Oh, okay, I'll get you. 
Uh, Steve says, Andy, are you putting a finish on this piece or are you leaving it raw? I think you'd probably come back to that one. Yeah, come back to it. I'll put a... Let's save that and we'll come back to it. (laughs) Real simple things is in the house. Do, 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 do. I've got his uh I've got his sticker sitting right next to me. I'm gonna need to put it on my board. Good old Barry. You know that's something uh, that's something I still haven't done. I still haven't got a sticker board. I have got paper but b- plastic bags full of stickers. And I still haven't put a bloody sticker board up. Do it's know been what years. I've... I've got two sticker boards, and I've still got um, a drawer full up. Uh, I was going upstairs in 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 my bedroom, and I've still got a shoebox full of stickers. Is it, I've got nowhere to bloody put them. Neither of I. Not with my mess anyway. <laughs> Mind you, when deal came to, when deal came on um, Saturday, he could see the floor. He did get to see the floor because I did do oh, a yeah. bit of tidying up. Do you know what? I don't even think Dow is a maker. You know, you never get to see any sawdust in his workshop. No, no, Jamie. Um... No, when was it? It was not last week. I think the week before, when he was doing something, there was sawdust on the floor because I commented on it. Oh, was it? Yeah, he, he must have just dro- he must have just dropped his vacuum bag yeah. or something like that. Well, either that or he just put it down either, there. Either that, I bet he went to the pet shop or something like that. <laughs> bought, bought a bag of I mean, rabbit bedding or something like that. Just I'll, I'll, show, the I'll show them what the eyes see and the ears hear, the mind believes. Yeah, all right. I know, I know I'm up to your game, sunshine. Mind you, with his floor, I don't think I would work in there. I'd I be know, dizzy right? all the time. The bit says, I've spotted a tiny speck on his invasion. <laughs> so she said that sort of fell out the deals that you win. It's just stuffing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, real simple thing says uh, the the beard placed it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, product placement. <laughs> I might go down to his house with a bag of sawdust and just drop it on the floor and see what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in the bag, but just drop it on the floor. Oh, I forgot to ask anyway. How are you feeling, Richard? I spoke to him uh, this morning on a call and he, uh, he, he didn't sound too good. As long as it's just an ordinary cold, flu, whatever. GPS, we've got a huge bag of acrylic and polyester dust if you want that. <laughs> Do you know what? I wonder what that would look like mixed with clear resin. All them different depends, it, 
Well, it depends. Yeah, I was going to see it depends if it's coloured or not. Yeah, because it might end up just going clear. Oh, ulcerated throat and flu. Oh, not nice, Rich. Not nice. So a real simple thing said, where is it? Is Andy doing the long boat? And Steve has replied, no, it's only about four inches. <laughs> Andy doesn't know what patience is. He's not gotten into scroll soaring properly yet. <sighs> I'm working on him though. It'd be Team Scroll Viking soon. There you go. Glenn's just put an offer out there. He's I'll, got I'll loads of aluminium swarf. If anybody wants to make a murder ball, and if anybody doesn't know what a murder ball is, I've turned one um, on my. Carl Jacobson got given aluminium swarf and resin from who was it, Jamie? Peter Brown. From Peter Brown to to do a ball out of. So that's what a, a murder ball is. It's basically aluminium swarf mixed with resin and turned on a wood lathe. Yeah. And uh, Zach Higgins was kind enough to give me one of them as well. Oh, yeah, a let, finish ball or a, a blank? I know, he, he gave me a blank. He's, I've done. I've done oh, it on right. my channel. I've done it on my channel, and uh, after I finished it, I wanted it out of my house now, so I donated it to uh, my auntie's wildlife park. It basically, as I was turning it, it was cut in my hands. All oh, right. So. Yeah. The one time you probably should have wore gloves the, then. The, 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 do, you, do you know what the funny thing is? It didn't hurt while it was coming off. But when uh, it's, it's like, it didn't hurt while it was coming off, but as soon as you looked at your hand, you realised that they were red raw. Oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's like was, someone yeah. was tattooing your hand with no ink and you had loads and loads of little um, needle points in your hand. That's That's the best way I can explain it. Right, I'm with you. I think Andy's showing off now, you know. Andy always shows off every Monday night. <laughs> I can't. I'll be, I mean, I, I can't do that. And I've said this to to Steve before. Um, I'm basically a wood turner. I just don't have um, the ability to look at something and see what's inside. If you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I'm pretty much. I won't say I'm exactly like that. Sometimes I can see it. Um, but when it comes to carving, it's, I just I, I don't, I'm just not good at it. It's just, straight up, I'm just not good at it. I mean, I, if I practice a few times, maybe it will it could come along and I might get better. Maybe I don't know. But then again, I was I was never able to do wood turning. I was never able to do scroll sawing at one point. Um, scroll sawing, I kind of took to like a, a duck to water. You know, I, I I did that once and. 
it just seemed I was good at it. Yeah. That, that's, uh, wood turning took a better practice. That's probably with wood turning. Um, wood, t- wood turning, I, I got a bit cocky even using carbide and um, yeah, had a bit of a few accidents there when I first started being a Wally. Thought that tool could do that when it shouldn't be doing that. And thought I could rough using the diamond one and yeah, that, that don't work like that. But, Wood turning was one of them things when the, when I first tried, cut, I never got a chance to try it at school. A lot of people got a chance to try it at school. I didn't. And when no, I, I first tried it, just, just when I was leaving the army, uh, I had a, a chance to have a go on the lead, and I thought, oh, my life. Yeah. I like this. So when, when, I, was, when I was at school, that li- quite literally, the only tool that we was allowed to use was a disc sander. Like power. Oh, right. Power tool wise, um, when it when it comes to other tools, it was it was all hand tool stuff, like you know, like chisels and coping saws and all that sort of stuff. And uh, what's funny is, is my my DT teacher or design technology, whatever you want to call it, told me I'd never be a woodworker because I I never I wanted love people. I, I never wanted to sit down and do the the theory side. I just wanted to jump in and do the um, the actual making because that's how my mind works. I don't I don't sit down and write plans and all that sort of stuff. I work and do it as it's coming to my head. And I'm sure yeah. a lot of other people are like that as well. You know, some people like the saying the uh, the wood talks to you and. Do you know that sort of thing? Just said he knew his stuff. (laughs) (laughs) You know, so yeah, I just I didn't like doing all of the the paperwork that came with, or the sort of schoolwork that came with the making. I just wanted to get on and do it, but they wouldn't let me get on and do it until I'd done the paperwork. And that's I where, know that's really bloody annoying. That is that. That's where we disagreed, and yeah. I know you're I, just teasing, Glenn. Yeah, the, the Steve saying using a rotary tool is like drawing with a pencil. You've just got to be aware of the direction the bit is cutting. Uh, yeah, that's true. But it, it, sometimes, Steve. You've got to know what it is you're actually putting into the piece. Uh, with with the stuff that Andy's doing here, with the stuff that you do as well, when see you're, when you're doing the carbon, I just can't see what's inside, which is why I do what I do. I just can't see what's inside a piece to actually go there and try and carve it out. Yeah, you got to let the acrylic talk to you. I don't know what it would say. Probably say something like, you ain't got a hope in hell. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing now? No, no, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, hey. Here oh. he is. Sorry about that. Need five minutes. Ooh. <laughs> Your fingers are in. Yeah, they are actually like quite a lot. Um, but oh, losing my wedding ring. But it's coming along better than what I first, what I had anticipated. Looks really bleached out on my picture, so I don't know if you can see it too. Oh, okay, maybe. Mm, yeah. Stupid camera. But yeah, it's coming along nicely. Thank yeah, you very we much. Yeah, see it better when it was on the table, Andy. Oh, you could see it better on the table. All oh, right, sure. I'll leave it there then, shall I? <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Um, so things are going well. I'm quite happy with how it's going, I suppose. Um, what's everyone saying in the chat then? Uh, Lots of good stuff. Yeah. Oh, cool. It's all good at the moment. Oh. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, slurpy slurp. 
Yeah, it's all full of positivity. Mm. Um, Apart from him... Glyn, he's picking on me. Oh, Glyn? I yeah, just he's picking on me as always. <laughs> he wasn't picking on me. He's giving me a, a big old... Uh... Andy, that's looking awesome. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Is that Lang skips or Nor skip that ship, Andy? What? It's a long ship. Um, hi, Tracy. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Sneak. And anybody else that I've missed? I can't see everybody. Very nice, Andy. Thank you, mate. Um, right, I'm going to swing back around and get cracking again, shall I? Um, on my flux capacitor. No, let's not even go there. Um, I'll flick the camera around and get cracking. Are you boys still all right there? Yeah, yep. we're still fine. Core EO. Just having a nice chat amongst the chat. Right. Oh, I just dropped my ciggy. There it is. Right. Right. I'm going to get it back on again. Um, and I'll put you back on mute again because you don't want to listen to the drill. Oh, good okay. <laughs> so Glenn just said we're having a great chat till you interrupt it, Andy. Oh, and just in case anybody wasn't watching, um... oh god, I forget the bloody name of it now. Anyway, Nick Zemetti did say last night that um, me is central will be a yearly event. Every single year, you heard it on our podcast first. Yes, well, me is international. That's what I forgot. And um, apart from the early event, he is thinking about doing smaller regional events as well, uh, yeah. which sounds absolutely brilliant. Yeah, like Mini Maker Centrals. Yeah, like Mini Maker Centrals in uh, various places throughout the UK. Um yeah. So if you have any links to, to Nick, to the Make Central website, things like this, go along and uh, let them know that you would really like to see this, especially the smaller ones. Yeah. He did uh, He did say on the show that he did look at other events for this show, like the, the London Excel Arena and things like that. But at the end of the day, uh, the NEC just came up with a, a price he couldn't say no to. Well, exactly. It, it, okay, it, uh, for a lot of people in the UK, or for some people in the UK, I should say, it is further south, um, but realistically, it's not a hell of a long way to travel. Um, obviously, for people who are coming abroad, it doesn't really that make, make that much difference um, as to the, the cost and everything. Because um, yeah. it's going to cost to come across here anyway. Um, for the smaller regional ones, um, mm. some people from further away from where they are will have to pay a bit extra. Some people who are closer, it'll be a hell of a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, it, but I, I think it, it sounds absolutely brilliant um, having the smaller ones. Yeah. Um. 
So uh, Steve said, I wonder if he'll do an Irish make a central. Um, so he mentioned last night about overseas. Uh, he says at the moment, it's just not feasible to do anything um, overseas, whether it's US or anywhere else. Um, but he says he's not sure about any time in the future. Um, so I guess that's just going to be something you just have to wait and see. But apparently there is some people that, um, over in the States that are trying to piggyback off the Maker Central name, which is a, a bit of a, an arse move. Yeah, but that... Uh, that, that... GP, that, that happens. It doesn't matter what anybody does. Um, other people are, are going to try and jump on the back of it. It's happened in the past. It'll happen in the future. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter what anybody does. So, uh, Tracy, what you want to try and do is I've I done some research for someone living in Georgia. Try looking for flights going to... Uh, fly to from Georgia to Miami, then Miami to the UK. Um, and I think that should take maybe about $300 off of the flight. Because I think, uh, who was it? Someone was saying about, I think it was uh, Derek, Derek from Malden. He just got a flight from Boston, uh, a return from Boston to I can't remember if he got Birmingham, it from, I think it was. Was it direct to Birmingham? I, and he got it. I think to, it was to Birmingham GP, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think he said he got it for like four hundred dollars, uh, something like that. Yeah, just just under. I think he said three ninety. So yeah, around about so, the four hundred dollar mark. I mean, you can't complain at that. Do you know what I mean? I mean, flight flights aren't. It doesn't seem like they're, they're, they're that bad now. I mean, I paid for me and Vicky to go to the States, and it cost us uh, 1300 to go to Oregon for both of us. Well, it cost me 1300 to for both of us. Yeah. And that's only, and I only paid an extra £300 because I was a day late paying because I messed up. Now, Steve's just mentioned the, I think, oh, David McLennan mentioned the, the Make a Meetup Ireland, uh, which Steve had last year. And uh, Steve said, yeah, hopefully that will be going on. If anybody fancies popping across to that from the UK, uh, I know you can get cheap flights from various airports across to Dublin. For around about forty quid, which is uh, very very. I think good. I, got, I think I got one cheaper years and year, years. I'm on the other side now. That was years ago. I think I got one for about twelve quid or something like that with Ryanair years ago. Well, I know um, Carlisle have just opened up their airport um, within the last. Well, I think it was the back end of last year. And they're doing flights across to Dublin. I can get a flight across to Dublin for 40, 40 quid return. You can't complain about that. I think, um, I don't know if any, uh, uh, how many people, I know there's some people that will know this person, but I don't know, uh, I don't, if it's $7,000, blooming hell, Tracy, I don't know where you were looking. Um, no, Tracy must be going via Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. Um, so there's, uh, I know there's some people out in the chat that will know who this guy is. Um, so uh, there's a Greek wood turner called Costas Anarchis or Anarchis Costas. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, he, I think he wants. He's been in contact with me a few times, and I think he wants to do a, a small maker meetup over in Greece. He's got the the facilities to host it um and it's real real cheap to get out to greece as well and he's got um, a bloody nice lathe as well yeah so um i think you're probably talking about 50 euros something like that to, to get out there um 
he basically wants to, he's basically the, the most famous wood turner in Greece. So he, he's almost like a celebrity in Greece, you know, when it, when it comes to the wood turning world or making world. Yeah. Um, so he, he kind of wants to like put making on the map, if you like. Over there. You know, that's it. Glyn says he lives in California. I yeah. That's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Can, um, can, I, yeah. can I just say um, that um, the Make Amigo Island last year, Steve just said that realistically it was Leona that did all the work for that. Um, but going back to Costas, um, I mean, the, the, the stuff that he does is brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. And I think yeah. um, Stuart Harini was out on holiday in Greece last year. That's and right. A couple of, yeah. did a couple of videos with Costas. That's right, yeah. Yeah, he's... Uh, so, yeah, Costas is... I've been talking to, talking to him recently. And, uh, yeah, he wants to he wants to do something out there. So he's he's. I oh, actually I spoke to him yesterday, and uh, he keeps harassing me and telling me I've got to come out there and see him. So he's actually just started a, a wood turning podcast for, it, it, but it's all in Greek. So unless you speak Greek, then I don't think it's going to do you much good. I only speak drunk drunkenese. That's what I speak. Drunkenese. <laughs> Oh, Clinton's ready to go to Greece. I'm I'm definitely up for it, especially at that price. Without doubt. So I might have to look into renewing my password. Uh, passport. Yeah, yeah. Dow and I are uh, Dow and I are going on a little trip this year. So, oh, where are you off to? We're going to New York. All right. Are, are you going up to see? Um... Getting his name as well. Well, Dow Dow's going. Dow's got to go over there for work, anyway. Um, but we're going to go to the the slip and slide with Tony McKenzie. Um, that was that was my original plan. I was going to go there, whatever happened. And so I turned around and said to Dow, "Said, is that something you'd be interested in doing?" Um, so he was like, "Yeah." He goes, "It's definitely something I'd be interested in doing." And um. So then he realised that he could go to his office in Manhattan while he's doing it. So, yeah, he's going to do that. We're going to go and stop off at Jimmy's and possibly if... if uh, I think we're going to have time to go down and see Doug from Paul Barn. I think that's something that oh, he brilliant. wants to do. So, yeah. Well, that's a lot further across in New York. Well, he's across in Michigan, yeah. really. Yeah, he wants to do a road trip. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think that's something he wants to do. So you're going to go up and see the man uh, in New York since, State? Uh, yeah, since uh, since Doug's driving. Uh, since, not since Doug's driving, since Dale's driving, I'll uh, I'll be tagging along. I need so. to win the fucking pills. So, uh, just to answer Wayne, um, the Bigfoot. Yes, Wayne, the ferries are very expensive. You would be better what? off looking at getting a flight if you're going across to. If you're talking about Ireland and going across for the 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 make a meet up in Ireland, um, look at getting a flight rather than a ferry. The ferries are very expensive. How much are the ferries these days then? Um, off the top of my head, um, lots. <laughs> Crikey. 
<laughs> no, but you, you're definitely better off looking at getting a, a cheap flight from one of the... Um, and now I know Wayne lives in Sheffield, so his closest airport will probably be Leeds. But you're yeah. better off looking at a flight from Leeds across to uh, Dublin. So Glyn said ferries, even for a motorbike, was expensive, £150 each. Hundred, yeah, I, I mean, from for me, I'd probably if I was getting a ferry, I would probably have to go from Stranraer across to uh, Belfast and then drive down. Um, and the, the, it's it's stupid price, it really is. Yeah. So Wayne said he'd have to hire a car, though, even if he flew. Well, I don't, well, this is this is something that um, I, I don't want to be um, putting people on the spot here. But this is something that that happened last year. I know Christine and Michael Heseltine went across to the Maker Meetup last year, and um, Leona actually took them from the airport um, to the venue, and I think they. Um, um, she also took see my memory i'm getting to that age and um, oh, the guy from italy i'll be right back all right i'm going to shut my camera off and my mic i'm going to take my laptop downstairs all right so when i come back i'll have a different view okay yeah, Yuval. So, sorry about that, Leon. I just couldn't remember Yuval's name for the minute there. Um, so, yeah, um, Leona picked up Yuval and Christine and Michael from the airport and took them across to the venue, which I've got to say was brilliant for her because the venue was fucking miles away from, from Dublin anyway. Steve Coombs has just come in. Oh, it might have been in for a wee while. Wayne, look at flying higher rather than uh, doing it by furry. I'm sure it'll be cheaper. Yes, David. David's just said that the um, heard that they're building a bridge from Northern Ireland to Scotland. I heard that as well, David. Um, I think the the shortest span for that is around about twelve mile. Um, but don't hold your breath. That would be a good idea, Steve. Trying to, I think that would be have to be coordinated with the uh, flight times and everything. So, Glenn, your pillow and your wife are calling. No new sunshine. It'll probably be a pillow. Night, night, sunshine. See you soon.
if people haven't already done this, um, can you share out Andy's channel? Ask people to, to like and subscribe because the work he does is absolutely awesome. Leona's up as well. Night, night, Leona. You're right, Steve. It is fucking cold. It's still blowing a hooli here. No snow yet, though. Yes, David, I had a look through Martin's new website. Um, looks pretty good. Love the gallery. Uh, I did notice um, nobody else got a look in apart from everything you put in there. <laughs> Hi, Herb. Hey, guys. Oh, and by the way, good on you, David. It's good to see that you got uh, lots and lots of mentions. Oh, Andy's back. Yeah. Guys, I'm going to have to stop because my hand is killing. Taking a beating, I think, we're doing this one tonight. I've done an awful lot of hogging out, and it's really giving my wrist some, uh, some jip, which is a bit of a shame, but that's what happens when you're getting old. Um, getting old? Yeah. You? Well, I am. Slowly, admittedly. But... So, I'm going to actually call it there, I think. So, it's just uh, getting a bit too much. Um, proper giving the wrist a right good uh, seeing to. So, are you alright if I put you on normal cam, Wayne? Yeah, you carry on, Sunshine. I'm still here. Right. Uh, cool. Um, I know JP's just popped out for a second, hasn't he? Yeah, he's just gone to move. Uh, I think he's moved into a different room. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really sorry, guys. That's flipping killing. You right, Wayne? <laughs> Why? Um, for some reason, I'm really loud to you. You're fine by me. Um, That's better. I've moved on to StreamYard now. Oh, right, okay. That, that'll be the time difference, won't it? Yeah. Um, oh, Country Wood Girls in. Cool. Oh, JP's back. Hello. Hello, mate. Um, my wrist is giving me proper jip, so I'm going to call it there, mate. All right, mate. 
Um, it's the vibrations and stuff. It's really hurting. That gave me yeah, the the, the, that, That's what you get. That's what you get from the the things with the um, that type of machine you're using with the Fordham type of machines. Yeah, I don't think you you get that same type of vibration because it's basically just an electric motor in your hand. Yeah, that was a hell of a lot more. They're a hell of a lot more expensive. Yeah, well, let, I'll have to speak to Dremel when I'm at Makers, but I. I don't think Dremel do them. It's Fordham that do them. Oh, they do. They've got a Fortiflex, which is like the... Uh, oh, a similar type of thing. Yeah, like high up. Right. Comes in a proper fancy business. Um, uh, but, uh, the rich should get yourself a neoprene glove, Andy. Yeah. I think I might have been pushing too hard as well, so like putting too much pressure on which probably what what's happening but um yeah it's one of those things um so yeah i'm gonna call it there guys um mm -hmm. thank you everyone for jumping on um and um i will let you all go about your wonderful evening have a good evening. See you um, for Wayne tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'll I'll pop in tomorrow since so Rich isn't feeling very well. I'll do my usual one on Wednesday, um, and uh, I think I'm still um, going to be doing a live along with Steve on Thursday as well. You are going to be totally pissed off with me this week. Not at all, mate. Not at all. You got to play your funky music, though, mate. Oh no, you can't. Copyright strike. Nah, no, nah, I'll not do. We'll get together later on in the week, maybe um, Friday night, and, and do some music, Andy. Yeah, man, I'm up for that. Um, right, everybody else, thanks ever so much for jumping on. Um, like, share, do what what you can. That's great. Let's see if we can get me to a thousand. It's quite a way. How, oh, yeah, far are, how far off are you? Yeah, probably about 700 and something. But, you know. <laughs> Not that far, then. It's worth asking, isn't it? Um, thanks, guys. Um, All right, man. Have a good week. And thanks to the boys for jumping on and being my wigs again this year, this week. Yeah. No problems, mate. Um, no worries, mate. Take it easy, guys. And... Shall see you soon. Night all. Night guys. Come on.